I'm just going to admit, I don't even know what episode this is. We will figure that out later. Um, I'm going to blah, blah here for a little bit because I always blah, blah a little bit, but I especially want to do a blah, blah because David and Kostya, as well as everybody else, are going to need some time to think about what's going on in this position for sure. Like for sure. It's just a very complicated one. And it's, uh, oh, you know what I got to say here? I'm going to even say black to move here somewhere. Somewhere I got to write black to move. DM Hokey took up all my space with Endgame Sensei there. That's okay. <laughs> I just got to sneak in a black to move somewhere so that while I'm doing the blah, blah, people uh, know uh, that it's in fact black. To move. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good black to move. Okay. So um, one uh, blah, blah, I want to say, to give these guys some time to think about it, I'm going to do a poll here pretty soon, is I did a lecture that I don't know if it was interesting, but what I came, I was at St. Louis Chess Club a couple years ago, and um, the idea was that there's two, that the kind of player you are will often create the kind of ending you play. And for example, um, I came up with a kind of a spectrum of builders and arsonists. And so the idea is that, um, you know, if you play kind of slow chess, like I do, honestly, uh, you will often get a pretty technical looking end game. It doesn't mean it's not complicated, but it'll be a position where building moves are going to be what's most important. Uh, on the other hand, if you play an arson, like an arsonist, like if you play King's Indian, you'll get some end games, but they'll often be pretty hectic, kind of like this. And as you can see, probably more, some of you have guessed this came out of a, a Benko like structure, which is a friend, a cousin to the King's Indian. Um, anyways, so I feel like this is a different, the first thing I just want to preface the show is this position, I feel, is of a little bit of a different nature to the positions that I gave Kostya and David before, which um, didn't feel to me quite as violent. But of course, the, one of the things, of course, is that uh, violent positions can go quiet and then turn violent again. There, there's really actually no escape from the violence. A lot of people think they can escape the violence in chess, but there's in fact no escape. You can play, you can slow down the violence, you can d defer the violence, but the violence actually never goes away. Um, the other thing I want to say, it's a, little, it's a little bit of a sad story here. Um, so, you know, with these positions, what I've been doing is um, I study it myself. I studied a lot more positions than just these ones, um, but uh, I pick then the ones that I find most interesting. Study it myself, come up with some ideas, and then uh, in lessons with students of mine, you know, I kind of give the, it to the students to see how they play, and we then we talk through how what their ideas were and just what they see in the position, what factors, what imbalances do they see, and how how did they make their decision. So um, I never use the computer, but here we come to the point of the story. I just had a lesson with a student and we we're looking at this position and it became obvious. <laughs> it became obvious that he was using the computer in our analysis. And it's not the first time this has happened to me as a coach. And uh, so the, the, Upshot here, there's no upshot. The point is that uh, I do now know what the computer thinks in this position. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. I generally don't know. I generally don't know what the computer thinks. Uh, I do have also have a, a sense of like what the human moves are, though. You know, I do think that and, that, and that's one of the key differences, right? There's just, uh, I want to see it through the human eyes because... Yeah, the computer's just going to tell you all kinds of things, you know. Um, anyways, it's an interesting story. It's not the first student I've had who has cheated in the analysis session. And it's, a, it's definitely a whole interesting psychological thing. Like, cheating in general, uh, um, 
especially if it's not for money or any kind of reason, like it's not because if you don't win the tournament, you're going to starve. Um, but you're just kind of doing it to cheat. That's one, one thing very prevalent. Of course, we've seen it, um, in a variety of levels, but you know, when you cheat with your, with your coach, it's this weird psychological thing, right? Where you are proving, you're trying to prove yourself to the coach. And usually it's just obvious. It's obvious when someone who's rated 1500 on chess.com is like playing super GM moves, right? It's like, <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to figure it out, <laughs> you know? Okay. So the poll is who is better and then the, this, the next question, of course, is what move should black do? Another big question. Um, so I've been, I've been blah blahing about six minutes, but before, um, before I ask them who's better and why, why don't I just ask, let's start with David. Dave, what are some of the basic things you can say about this position? Things you notice? Um, white has uh, the open B file and uh, the white minor pieces on the king side are not amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess black's bishop on a6 is kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. Despite being closer to the action, it's still kind of stuck. Um... I don't know. <laughs> there are enough. There are few enough pieces on the board that the players could bring out their kings, but neither has has done that yet. So nobody has like you know advantage in uh, in king activity yet or king proximity. Okay. Like last week, you had that position where just the king being on g two instead of g one, or in this case, you know, would be g seven or something for black, mm -hmm. would be like one step towards a minute advantage. Right. Um, yeah. okay. I mean, I noticed the knight on d4 is a little bit weird. Like, uh -huh. Sort of like, I mean, it's the, the most centralized piece, but it's also, you know, very easy to, to start chasing around and who knows where it, whether it'll end up somewhere good or bad. Okay, uh, before we move on to Coast, let's do a little comic relief. Shakespeare believed in comic relief. So let me just ask. You sure think, did. <laughs> so let's just do a little comic relief here. Elfin's right, that's right, that's a big juicer on C4. Now I wanna just ask, cause I've been wondering about this. Is that a proper use of the word juicer? Because I I don't understand juicer. I've been hearing this word juicer. And I, at this point, I feel like I deserve to know what the definition of a juicer is. Um, yeah, there's a couple definitions floating around. <laughs> uh, some people say a juicer is a uh, free, free pawn. Uh -huh. Some people say a juicer is any pawn. Some people say a juicer can be any piece. Any piece on the board can be a juicer. But is it it's a good thing to be a juicer? Or is it just like... Is it like it gives you the juice when you take it or something like that? <laughs> what is it like a squeeze of lemon? What is it? <laughs> um, well, I mean, in normal slang, yeah, juicer is someone who like takes steroids, but I don't know what that has to do with this. <laughs> well, right. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'm sure. I understand that thing yeah, about yeah. juicer, but I don't know. Um, I, <laughs> I think I feel like Naka was the one who popularized this word juicer, right? But I still don't get it. I don't get like the juicer. And I want to learn these things like the bathtub. We talked about the bathtub. That was important. I got the whole, I got that in my head now, the bathtub. <laughs> the juicer, I'm not sure. I'll say this, a word that has too many different meanings at some point has no use by lacking any specificity. Yeah, and, and we got gigahertz saying it doesn't mean it's inherently good or bad. It's got to be either good or bad if I'm going to call something a juicer, you know. Right. Anyways, okay, comedic relief over coasted. Do you have anything to add just in terms of naming the imbalances that uh, Mr. Proust said or add, you want to add to any of that? Uh, to be honest, I don't, 
I don't feel like I understand the position at all. Um, I do like White's Knight on C3. I think that's a very good piece. I'll say okay. that. <laughs> You're wondering whether to call it a juicer. <laughs> no, it's a good knight. It's a good blockade. Okay, I just want to say, as the sensei, you know, this is a very difficult position, but I do think it's very important to just try to name the the basics. And there's definitely some things you guys haven't named yet. And I think it doesn't necessarily mean you'll find the right move if you name it, but I mean, it's I think it's important to be named. Well, the A-pawn is good for white. It's kind of like a past A-pawn. Um, but usually like Benko end games are supposed to be like nice for black. So, yeah, it's okay. It's, so what I have a feeling that David and Kosi, it's so deeply ingrained in their mind that they're just, it's so obvious they're not saying it. But, so White has an outside pass pawn. And uh, in the end game, this might turn into a thing. Black's pawn, though, is more advanced. So just in terms, if you want to think about it in terms of time, Black is just more heavily invested already in going down the board. Okay. Um, and then I think it's a really interesting question. A lot of times in these Banco N games. Actually, I won't say anything more. I'll talk more when these guys start playing. The results of the poll, pretty clearly in favor with 54% saying black, 25% saying, oh, actually, it's still, it's almost over, but definitely uh, in favor of black. Kosu, what do you think? Who do you like here? Um, I don't know. I would say it's uh, equal before I said anything else. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, that's fair. David, yeah. what would you say? Same. Okay. Who would you rather be, David? Uh, I guess black, because if the position is equal, then I'd rather have gotten a black out of the way in the tournament. No. It goes to who would you rather be? Honestly, I'm not really sure. Uh, I guess I would maybe rather be white. Okay, well, there it is, my friends. There it is. The pairing has been made. Kostya will be white. David will be black. And uh, we're, you guys just make sure you're in the live chess, and we're going to get this party started. All right, here we go. Oh, man, this is a tough one. And I just wanted to give extra time. Now, remember, uh, David, you don't... Once think about your move now because you chess.com is evil and that it only know. gives you like a minute before it's like your toast, you know. I'll make some kind of move. Oh, you know, it's a, let me just say one hilarious thing. I was looking at uh, <laughs> I was looking at a chess dojo game here, so we got idle player and chess gains. I was doing some research for a different student of mine. And so that's why we got idle player and chess games. That's a ball about to change, but that is just a hilarious feature <laughs> on the current board here. All right, here we go. Match. All right, and Kosia is going to be white. And then Mr. D. Pruce is going to be black. And I will share this uh, board. Let's go 730. Unrated. I will share this board with the... Uh, chat so that we can all play guess the move that looks correct are right, you guys ready here it comes all right and then they're they're gonna uh depart and i'm gonna pull out my little headset here yeah i'm trying to leave all right so here we go my friends Fascinating position. I'm not going to tell you what the computer says. I think the computer kind of, it did, it did ruin it for me. Wow. Is, is Mr. Proust a computer, man? He played the computer move. <laughs> that was not the move played in the game. It might be the best move. Bishop Z8, he played it. All right, let me uh, share this game with you guys. Tell me if that works and we'll, we can play guess the move a little bit. Um, in my own personal analysis, so let me just say uh, the game 
uh, this is from the game Vaganian, who was a genius, against Rashkovsky, 1981. And in that game, Black played a very human move, Rook B8. Um, and, you know, basically saying that the Rook, he was willing to dislocate the Knight on D7 for the sake of challenging the B file. And another student of mine who didn't look at the computer also played that very human move. Oh, game aborted. You guys, you chumps. You chumps. It's hard to write out these things that I got to write it all out. All right, hello, Kostya. All right, buddy. He wasn't prepared for the move. It's fair. It's fair. Now he's going to get more time to think about it. That's like a way to cheat. That's <laughs> like a way to cheat in this thing. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Now I can't. I have to be careful because since I... We gotta go back and I gotta steal this fen. Oh, crime it yet. Fen. Fen, buddy. Fen for yourself. All right. All right. Oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Ooh, where did it go? Oh. Oh, you know what I could just do? I could just do this. Watch. Whack, whack. You don't have to make it so complicated, cry. Bam. All right, here we go. They are ready. I think Mr. Proust is committed to Bishop C8, but I guess he could change his mind. Yeah, Gritman, it was a little bit, it was a little bit underhanded by the millennial Kostya. But now Mr. Proust is reconsidering. He might do a different move. <laughs> A metronome. I didn't even know. I didn't even know about the metronome. Oh, Mr. Proust, don't don't uh, blow it on. Don't, don't go on. Don't use more than a minute, buddy. You there, bud? Hey, Proust, move, buddy, move, move in the next couple seconds. Oh, he's lost in thought. All right, he did. <laughs> recognized my chess.com account? Oh, could be, Nordovich, yeah. All right, now there's only one, okay, here's the thing about bishop c8. It only works if you see rook a3 from black right here with the idea, the tactic of rook a3, rook c1, rook c3. And e3, for that reason, I think is probably a mis well, definitely a mistake. And now, now Coast is going to get the pain. And so that was actually, Bishop C8 was the move my student played against me when I didn't know he was cheating. And this was one of the tactics that you have to see in order to play Bishop C8, right? You have to actually see this tactic. Uh, and it was one of the first of many clues that maybe he was uh, using the computer. Yeah, this is a great position for David. And I think, uh, well, right. So now we have to start asking ourselves, is there a way for Kostya to be competitive still? And I'm assuming maybe like, maybe ED, Rook C3 and Bishop F1 or something, but it's nasty. There's no doubt that it's nasty. The, the, the good news for white in that position is at least maybe we can snaggle the C pawn or something, you know? All right. The good news for Hello Costa here is that he does have, he can think for a while. I don't know what other move we could do, right? Because if we move the knight on C3 somewhere, at the very least, black can go check to the miserable king and rook takes a2 and then that pawn is rolling, you know? It's just rolling. And I don't see anywhere, like, useful that the knight on c3 could go. Yeah, Baron, that was kind of a... Well, not only is it sad, but it ruins my 
human perspective on this position. <laughs> and uh, my student's computer, though, found this Rook A3 trick that David played on his own. So props to David for finding that. I don't... Bishop C8, when, if you, what's really cool about the move Bishop C8 that David played, actually, you know, is the bishop on A6 is jammed. He did note that, you know, and I think one of the cool things that really is important for anybody is when you first get to a crazy position, just try to name the stuff happening. And so when we go back, right, to the position before bishop c8, the rook is jammed on a8, the bishop's jammed, so bishop c8 makes a certain amount of sense. And then the other thing that my student's computer saw was that it's difficult then for my the bishop on g2 to leave, and it might cost you a tempo, for example. If we go back to this position. Um, if knight f3, which might be the best move, knight f3 can go knight takes, bishop takes, and then we move the knight on d7, well, then the, the, the pawn on h3 is hanging, right? So that's an additional problem that white has. All right, so here's our current position. Hello, Coast is in trouble. Um, well, it's not so much he cheated against me, but he, you know, we were, I, I asked him to try to play out the position. So essentially he was cheating against me. You know, we were, you, you know, trying to play a practice game out of this position. Uh, no, he, we, he wasn't bad. We were playing over the analysis board, you know. It was really, you know, it's not the first time that a student's done that to me. It's a very weird uh, phenomenon. So here we're going to test Costa's ability to, to fight here. Yeah, so he, we're, I mean, it's got to be assumed now that he's worse. But he still has practical chances. Um, and I think... Bishop f1 is the first thing that comes to my mind. Maybe knight f1? I don't think so. Um, but maybe. Maybe knight f1 as well. Um, to say the obvious, it's very difficult for black to move his minors, right? Because of like rook b8's business, and he doesn't really want to move the bishop. Bishop F1, good. All right. So keep position for David. Um, and let's say some obvious stuff. The knight on G4, or excuse me, H2, desperately needs to get into the game. And I Freudian slipped G4, obviously, because that's, I think, what uh, Kostya would like to do next. Knight G4 to E3. And so... David should definitely use some time here. He's probably already thought a little bit about this position. Um, let's just brainstorm some possible moves for him. Uh, we got king g7. We got rook c2. We got the weird but plot possible h5 or f5 just to hold the knight down. And, you know, the, the thing about playing a move like rook c2 is in a certain level, you're just playing with the rook. You're not playing with any of your other pieces. But it's a hell of a pawn. <laughs> it's a hell of a pawn that we're getting ready to push to c3. So there's that. Um... Yeah, I like the way, I mean, I, I believe in Black's position now, but I like the way Kostas try to defend this thing. <clears throat> and I'm not entirely sure what Black should do here. And, you know, all I know is for sure is there's going to be, there is going to be heavy tactics here coming down. Okay, maybe. Maybe that's just simple and strong. Okay, 
honestly, I you know what? I, I wasn't on part of my radar, but uh, there is no reason to think that that's a bad move. So, uh, I would assume knight g4 is got to be played. You got to get the knight in. Um, I don't know what else. You guys are having some discussion. I don't know. I don't. It's it's going on hot and heavy over here. <laughs> They're S O. I don't even get it. Breams wants rook a three. So what? Maybe knight g four, rook a three. Or maybe you wanted to play rook a3 first. It's a thought. Um, a very ambitious move for white now could be to play a4 with the thought that then rook a3, I've got rook b4. And here's a nasty variation then. So a4, rook a3, rook b4, c3, I think that's an next clamp. c3, bishop takes, c2, and you can't stop me from queening because rook c4, rook a1, check. Check to the miserable king, indeed. So that's the kind of tactical variation. It's, it's, it's hard to mess with, honestly, because rook a3, if you don't play something like rook b4, uh, you were just going to take the pawn, and it's going to be thank you very much. So it'd be, it's, it'd be super impressive if Mr. Proust saw that when he played Bishop a6, you know, because otherwise maybe white could hold on. And then I think Mr. Brames said rook a3. You could have conceivably played that move earlier and had a nice position. But this way it's more exact, you know, because then there's no immediate play on the c pawn. So let's just draw some arrows and double check that uh, tactical variation. Rook a3, rook b4 would be the only try, I see anyway. c3, it's a hell of a pawn. Bishop takes bishop, c2, well, that's it, right? There's, there's nothing more to say. We're coming down, downtown Charlie Brown. Rook c4, rook a1 check because the bishop's no longer there. You do something and pop, game over. Oh, significant other. Uh huh. Time is ticking on Kostya. Well, Kostya's in, in big trouble here. Uh, but, but it's David is ticking. <laughs> it's David is dicking. Um, he's just, I'm assuming he's, he's going to, that's the thing he's going to see, I would say. And it goes back to our original point of like, on a, um, let's call it long term, yeah, let's call it a long term perspective. The outside pass pawn is definitely more dangerous. But black pawn is just further advanced. It's It's got juice. <laughs> it's got some juice, man. Okay, maybe a hope for Mr. Proust could be, or excuse me, for Kostya could be to play um, rook c1, and if rook a4, knight g4, e3. It's very hard to believe. Um, but it might be a way to try to continue the game. Because I think rook b4, c3, that looks to me like it's over immediately after c3. And rook a1 played instantly. This might be just might be just as strong. It certainly looks very good. Yeah, it looks very strong. This does give white the opportunity to play rook b2, 
But honestly, after Rook B2, at the very least, you can just start snipping El Pano. So, King G2. C3, baby. C3, good night, Lucy. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye. And, you know, you can sack the exchange on C1, right? So you can go C3, Bishop A6, uh, C2, Rook C4, C1, Snip Snop. But it's gone because your, your pawns are so messed up, you know? And I can play, and the Rook is just a beast. And your Knight isn't even in the game. So we might have an early Sensei here. We might have an early Sensei finish. <laughs> he shouldn't have cut his hair. He's got nothing to pull. I like that haircut, man. I like that haircut. He looks like a conservative kid from the 1950s or something. Like I like it. I always thought if, if, if David had lived in a different time, he would have been a player with the ladies, dude. Would have been totally a player, but that was never who he was. I do remember the 50s, yeah. Thank you, Dudas Monk. I like Mr. Bruce, Mr. Bruce, man, you know. I like he, this, this kind of uh, play that he's put together in this game. Gives us hope that he can play for the GM title. Um, yeah. You play like this, dude. This is convincing. He's so down on himself and, like, down on the idea of, like, fighting, fighting for it and yada yada. Come on, man. Let's fight. Let's fight. Jesse is younger than my parents. <laughs> it's cold, man. You guys are cold. Well, Mr. Proust, I'm not exactly sure what you're thinking about, buddy. Like, it's... Okay, there it comes. There it comes. He just wanted to show... He, he was enjoying the position. A lot of times, a player will enjoy the position so much that they will just want to sit there for a little bit, you know. They just enjoy it. Yeah, this is toast. If, if those pawns were connected, like if that d5 pawn were back on e3, I would say we got ourselves maybe some kind of fighting chance, but the way it is now, uh, or if that were for a knight on h2 were somehow better, but yeah, this is a great example. That rook is going to be angry. Just a very angry man. And those pawns are so weak. And my sensei Smyslov said that uh, the knight is a genius when it comes to the weak pawns, and it certainly is here. Like, yeah, if we moved it around a little bit, we could maybe dream that white has enough to hold just because the black king is out, you know. But here it's very hard to imagine. Is that a Kasparov? I don't know who, what you mean, man. You know, it's funny. We were talking about, um, we we're talking about dojo talks or something about, yeah, maybe we we're talking about David maybe doing improvement. He was like, oh yeah, man, when I see my rating and I just, I just feel it's so terrible. I was like, yeah, dude, look at that. 2356. You're stinking up the dojo proofs. Fix that rating, dog. Go on a 2700 quest. At least go on a 2500 quest, man. Fix that thing, man. That's bad optics. <laughs> That's bad optics, bro. <laughs> Fix that, son. <laughs> He's thinking up the dojo, Freddy. I'm telling you, man. Come on, Bruce. Get it together. He's like, oh, no, man. I'm, I'm a communist, dude. I, I don't care about... These things that you guys are talking about, it's all lies, Bruce. We know you care, dude. We know you care. One of the genius things about the Benko and the, the um, dragon is it's a lot of times you get positions like this and black is just like, how do you ever want to touch me? How do you ever want to get counterplay? And there's just nothing. There's no counterplay. There's no joy. There's just nothing you can do to the dude, you know?
Nothing. <laughs> um, there it is. All right, let me put in my headphones. We'll, be, we'll talk a little bit. All right. These guys will come back on there. Mr. Proust dog, nice game, dude. Nice game. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, love. So let me. I'm gonna share it. Or excuse me. Yeah, I'm gonna grab this thing, and then I'm gonna invite you guys to an analysis board, and uh, then we can talk about it a little bit. Let's get get rid of the old chat. Actually, let's let me just do this. We'll load this up. Get rid of chess gains. Poor chess gains. Bang. Um. Well, Mr. Proust, let's begin. I loved your first move. Tell me about it. Um, well, there were only really two moves I considered for the first move, rook uh -huh. b8 and bishop c8. Uh -huh. I have no idea which is best. I mean, uh -huh. I played bishop c8 the first game, uh -huh. and then we restarted the game, and I thought another 57 seconds yeah. <laughs> about which one I wanted to do. It was a tough call. You know, I felt if I trade the rooks, that that makes white's a pawn a bit better. Um, I understand like an outside pass pawn, there are certain pieces that care more or less about it. Mm -hmm. So I would be left with two knights and a king, which really hate pass rook pawns. Uh -huh. And I'd only have one bishop left. Right. The rook is the piece that cares the least about that outside pass pawn. So that's a danger with playing rook b8. Um, However, like at the moment, White's Rook is better than mine. Um, so I figure I have to either improve my Rook immediately with Bishop C8 or trade it with Rook B8. Uh -huh. um, and, and did you see this trick with Bishop C8, E3, Rook A3 right away? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was my threat. I was expecting A4 after Bishop C8. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Well, and, go ahead. And you know, even with the rook a3 move it's not like i mean it's like i mean it's the move i have to play but it doesn't like win anything um he could just play knight e4 and no, we'll, 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 we'll talk maybe we'll i talk miscalculated but i thought i couldn't take the a pawn um, okay yeah we'll talk about it in a sec um so um let me say uh so <laughs> bishop c8 is the computer move that my student played against me and i tried everything i tried everything you know and then in every variation of course i was realizing more and more that he was cheating but i played um i didn't play the only move i didn't play was ghost is e3 i tried knight f3 and then one of the cute things that the computer saw is that, and maybe you saw too, is that then my h3 pawn, I'm going to have to spend a tempo on at some point. So, sorry, one second. Did you, um, did you invite us to your analysis oh, board? Oh, I always make board? this mistake. I'm sorry, you guys. I always, I always do this every single time. Okay. Every I mean, if you want time. us to train it blindfold. That's no, 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 no. We don't do that here. That's you, buddy. <laughs> That's you. All right. Mr. Proust. Let's invite him. And then let's invite uh, also Mr. Hello Kostya. Hi. This is the problem with chess.com was he, people want to be my friend on chess.com. And I'm like, no, because then I'll have too many people. I can't find, I can't find them, man. when I'm trying to invite him. Okay. So I write, I played in our practice games, I played knight f3. And then the problem was I had to spend a tempo later with the pawn. Mm -hmm. And then I played uh, a4, and I tried king f1. Mm -hmm. And in each of those, I thought I thought I was maybe going to be able to prove that white was better. And then in each time, his computer was just crushing me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ultimately, it's probably equal or something after, say, I don't know, something like knight f3. But I, I wanted to believe, you know, I wanted to believe that uh, white was maybe a touch better. That's my instinct, by the way, just my human instinct going into this position that white is a touch better, but it's really a, it's a really tough call. Um, when I looked at it, I want to admit too, that I didn't, 
uh, think of bishop c8. My move with the, was the move in the game, rook b8, which I guess is a mistake. Um, and the move I thought was very clever was knight c5. And the reason I convinced myself this was very clever is that if e3, then we can do this phantasmal. What? Right? Check it out. Sure? Boss. Well, I don't know. You, we can double check, but to me, it looked the evil. Right? That's pure evil there, right? I didn't see any way to stop it anywhere. Um, um, yeah, Jesus. Now I didn't dream of that. I would go for this if I could, if I could see it. <laughs> well, you know, White could play knight f three. He doesn't have to play e three. You know, mm -hmm. he can play knight f three. Um, right here, I think I was thinking uh, rook b four. Maybe rook b four. Yeah. Um, and then there's all kinds of hairy things that can happen because the knights can knight c two, and I don't know. You know, you can get. Oh, yes, really move like rook b four or knight f three. Can black also play knight b five? Uh, not it, against knight f3, right? The white knight's got to do something. Yeah, the knight's got to be active in some way. Yeah. yeah. Right, and rook b4 is dangerous, but, but yeah, and it, you know. Um, um, rook, rook b4, knight c2. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what's going on after rook c2. It's hard to say. Um, but okay, let's let's look at the game. So, um, so, so is knight c5 better? No, if, if your student's computer played bishop c8, then bishop c8 is better. It's actually, let me just tell you a hilarious uh, counterpoint. So, so the student denied it, okay, even though it was like really obvious. And then he, in, to defend himself, you know, I was like, because at a certain point I was just like, uh, he, he was denying it. And I was like, okay, let's just check to see if the computer plays exactly your moves. And then... As a defense to that, he said, but look, knights, it says knight c5 and bishop c8 are the same. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, so anyways, it said that they were both roughly equal, which really ruined it for me, man, because to me, of course, from a human perspective, you know, maybe it's equal, but you have no idea, right? Just like, yeah. oh my God, you know? Yeah. Okay. So we I got, wouldn't be worried with white or with black, by the way. <laughs> right. And then I'm guessing, Kosi, you just missed the power of rook a3. Yeah, I mean, actually, like, when I was thinking about it, I wanted to play rook b4 originally. And then I saw rook b4, rook a3. Mm. So I, I flagged the first game. So I was like, well, I don't, I don't have a move. <laughs> 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 I need more time. Because actually, as black, I was also thinking I would play bishop c8, but then I didn't know what I would do in rook b4. So when you gave me white, I was like, oh, I guess rook b4 is my move. Then I saw rook a3. And then, yeah, I guess I should go king f1 or something. Because, um, yeah, I just missed everything, like e3, rook a3. You know. mm -hmm. um, yeah, then it was already kind of like pretty annoying for white there. Yeah. Well, I want to say in my uh, now my little you know when I faced the computer it was annoying for me too because intuitively I did believe in White's position, and the whole bummer is when you play King F one, and then you're like, well, wait a second, just a half a second ago my rook was the more active one, and now I'm doing this passive game, yeah. you know. And Bishop F one's like a big move, right? So the King and Bishop are kind of tripping. Well, right, and my dream, of course, was that I was going to be able to be more active, but it. His computer was just shutting me down. <laughs> it's just shutting me down. <laughs> Anyways, that's how it goes. I mean, it seems like the black bishop comes back to a6. So now their rook's not worse than yours. And the knight on c3 is white's better minor piece, right? Compared to black's mm. sort of wandering knight. But once you play bishop a6, it's obvious that black can play knight b5 at will in this position. It Oh, it was worse than that. It went like knights. How did it go? Um, yeah, he played knight c5. So now on every time I play e3, he's got knight d3. Mm -hmm. And then I played king e1. He played bishop. His computer played bishop d7. 
and you know he's lining up night be the computer's lining up that kind of stuff correctly you know getting rid of my blockading piece yeah well yeah. that's even better maybe than bishop yeah. a6 it's even you better stay yeah. honest on h3 <laughs> it's rough dude it's really rough <laughs> Anyways, I thought for I thought Costa's first attempt at trying to defend this was reasonable. Um, Bishop F one. I don't know what else he was going to do. My, you know, I don't know what you guys felt, but I my sense was that maybe it's technically lost, but that White still has some practical chances here. Yeah, but Jesse, shouldn't we go back to yeah. to? I thought that instead of taking he could just move his knight off of oh excuse me there was that i didn't think he could do it but let's take a look okay so i mean that's like pretty critical because i think once he makes this trade black's probably better um mm. but if he plays knight e4 um i was planning knight e2 knight c3 just to trade my knight for his knight that seemed superior mm. okay well let's so okay so the obvious question is what's going on with knight e2 king f1 mm -hmm. Rook a2. Bishop f3. Okay. And now a couple of questions. That's as far as I got. <laughs> well, I mean, I saw I couldn't play knight takes g3 check because his knight takes back, not the f pawn. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at f5, bishop e2, f4, e bishop c4, and thought, yeah. Playable, but. So one good piece of news is on f5 bishop e2 fe bishop c4 you maybe you'll live this knight is terrible though oh man yeah all right so let's try f5 yeah so takes 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 and rook c2 at the end i thought it was like a playable option for me but but sort of simplifying too I think if he keeps chasing the rook with the bishop, he'll get the tempo to play knight g4 before I play knight e5. Oh, he can't play knight g4 because of h5. I missed that. This this looks bad, doesn't it? Because like, because the knight c5 is coming, man. Okay, I should have gone for this. Well, you did. His <laughs> coach didn't go for it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. Oh, oh, I see, yeah, but see. I wasn't. I wasn't going to take the pawn, Jesse. Mm. Now, okay, well, so we can consider this. And Every time I don't take a pawn on stream, Jesse, I mention you. <laughs> your <activations>. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what I was going to play. And all I can say about this is it feels like maybe, you know what another bummer about, let's just say a bummer, is that when you putting the pawn here, it means that the knight cannot come into e3. I know. What a good square e3 is too. Yeah. So what was your assessment of this position, David? I thought I'm very comfortable. Yeah, okay. No, that's, that seems fair. Let's just play a couple more moves. King e1. Yeah. I mean, I was slightly concerned that white's king was getting active before mine, but mm -hmm. I thought, like, the minor pieces are worse than mine. I dealt with the rook problem. I kind of like... I kind of like this structure in general, you know, if I don't have problems. So yeah. king g7 now, probably. Or bishop a6. Your bishop a6 might work fine, too. But yeah, yeah I think like I'll that. go king g7 and develop the knight first because the bishop's just as good on c8 for the moment. I don't know mm -hmm. for sure what I want to do. Right. That guy comes out. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. can I play rook c2? Here? I don't know. Now, I guess it's fine. I guess it's just more or less equal now. No, I don't know. No, I I still believe in you here, buddy. No, right? I think you can play knight d four. But even in this resulting position, yeah, I still like you. Yeah. I like me, but it's not enough to win a game. Well, look, I still owe, he owes you a tempo over here. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, as I was telling stream, like in these end games, black has, there's no, there's no way to hit black, you know? Mm -hmm. And this, yeah. 
But fair enough, this would have been a, a thought for him yeah. in going this way. Anyway, I was going to play something like this. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And, you know, you could have thought about it, too. I'm sure you would have thought about it on 94. You, you have the, the default, right, of 92, knight c3. It, and that's good to have because, you, 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 you're sure, you could be worried about getting your peace trap. That's totally natural. And I'm not even... Had, yeah. Kostya had spent, like, <clears throat> maybe three minutes after rook a3. So I had decided that if he played knight e4, I was going to, you know, play the next move instantly and just trade the knight not take the pawn. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, let's... I thought what he did was correct. Let's see. So bishop f1. Bishop a6. Good move. I thought that was a good move. Um, and now I guess the only way to play a4 is if that c3 trick doesn't work. Right? Yeah. I expected knight g4 to e3. Here. Good. That's what I thought, too. Uh-huh. I thought the game was still pretty stable here. When you put, say pretty stable, what, what does that mean? Like, I didn't think white was... I wasn't excited yet. Oh, I think you should be excited, boss. I'm just playing. <laughs> I think you should be excited. I'm sure Kostya, for example, feared rook a3. Mm -hmm. oh, that's Knight. pretty... I'm getting excited. Knight e3. And now we have both rook a2 and c3. Both of those moves look good. Right. I don't know. You choose. I don't know. Because that pawn on d5, man, that resulting endgame, holy smokes. Yeah. And yeah, they're both they're both very unpleasant. Well, um, I was also thinking about like rook e4, but then the line I didn't like here, funny, was rook a3. Um, take, take, take. And then if rook a2, I have rook c7, black can just go like knight f6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I thought I'm worse here, even with the extra pawn. <laughs> well, right, I think you're lost here, yeah. Because the, Yeah, so this is know. why I played a4. Lost? I didn't want this. That looks really bad, yeah. It didn't look fun. I don't know if it's lost. It didn't look fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, how would you, how? Okay, so how well, would he's, it? He's got to play rook c2. Black could have played knight b6 anyway to force the point. Okay, let's force the point. For whatever reason, I, the knight uh, over there looked... Okay, but yeah, force the point. Yeah. Knight d5 threatening perhaps knight b4. Uh -huh. On rook b2, there's rook b3. I think knight c3 would be my next move. Okay. Oh, yeah. And on knight g4, I could just cruelly play h5. Say, like, please play knight e3 or resign. Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay, this is pretty heinous. Yeah. And, like, knight f1, I can play... On knight f1, I can play knight c3 or rook a4. Oh, yeah, it's nasty. It's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, guys. Well, that was a good sensei. It was quick. <laughs> it was quick, but it was also <laughs> actually in the nature of the uh, beginning position that... You know, it's a very violent position to begin with. Um, and I think, dude, I mean, you played better than the super GM who was playing black. I don't know, the super GM is a very strong GM back in the day, Rashkovsky. Who? Rashkovsky. Okay. Played in a lot so of Soviet we championships. So I guess this to YouTube, stuff. I'm going to get accused of cheating for a second time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get accused of cheating, dog? For my gauntlet episode. In which I did terribly, by the way. <laughs> you cheated during the gauntlet, man? Of all the times to cheat, you cheated on the gauntlet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of all the moments. <laughs> I think the cheating episode was really, you know, I had a... So my other time this happened, it was also very obvious, was a kid. Again, he, you know, he just wanted to, like, impress me or something. And I think, ultimately... It's weird. With it, it kind of helps explain what the cheating phenomenon is about. Is it's it's not people like stealing, uh, you know, doing shoplifting out of maybe a resentment towards society or something. It's it it's not any other kind of feeling of crimes that you get out there. It's a sense of like I want you, 
Jesse to see that I'm somehow like a great chess player, you know, I want you to see it. And, um, anyways, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird psychological thing. And I think when people cheat in general, and when I say in general, I mean like in blitz games or whatever, uh, there has to be some element like that too, you know, going on in their minds. Yeah. Yeah. I bring it up with a student. What do you say? Well, dude, I was like, okay, I, I said, listen, you're not the first one to have done this, you know. And then like all cheaters, <clears throat> there's like an instant response of like, no, I didn't do it. And then even when it's then made obvious, you know, that they did it after you've committed yourself psychologically to saying you didn't do it, you're never going to admit it, you know. He kind of half heart. He, he didn't defend himself in a very vigorous way, though. <laughs> you know, what I mean? so it's like, yeah, it's a, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting. Are you going to keep teaching the student? Uh, good question. I I did end the lesson prematurely. I was like, well, I got to go do sensei now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, was like, I wouldn't normally gone, you know, longer. I was just like, no, it's of course it's depressing, man. Of course it's depressing. I had a similar story. I had a kid that I was sponsoring, so obviously I'm not gonna make it too specific or give yeah. a name, but through chess.com we were like sponsoring a kid, right? So we're mm. like giving them money and like, you know, they're supposed to be a role model for other kids on like the chess kid website and stuff. Mm -hmm. We're like sponsoring a kid and I like was paying for them to have lessons and like training games with like a super GM. Uh huh. And they would like come into the training games and just beat the shit Oh wow! I'm yeah, yeah, beat, yeah. The, beat the tar. Yeah, just beat the ever-loving tar out of this like super GM that we're like paying like, you know, significant oh, yeah. money for. Uh huh. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> what a waste of like time and money! And are you kidding me? Like, um, you know, it's not even their own time or money, right? Like, right. They're, they're being sponsored. To, nobody's seeing the game. It's like a private game. No one's ever seen it. You know, just me and the GM. All right. And uh, and they did it repeatedly until um, we stopped the arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should have told the super GM to just leave their computer running against the kid and go for a walk or something. <laughs> 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 oh man. Okay. Well, that's that's the way it is. That's part of the current scene. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. We got a. Uh, by the way, uh, I'll just make an announcement. We're going to do a dojo talks at, uh, I believe, five o'clock before Scrubs. Scrubs is the more impressive show. So we're going to like, we're going to, uh, we're going to do the, we're going to do the pre-band. We're going to open it. We're opening for the Scrubs on Sunday. But anyways, we're going to talk about the evolution of chess culture. Uh, kind of dear to my heart. There's a lot of things that have changed in my lifetime. I want to talk a little bit about that, but also with a view to the future of just stuff that's going on now. Uh, this makes chess different. It's just a different game in so many ways. And we'll talk about that on Sunday. So if you have any topics that have to do with that, send us a tweet or something. We'll definitely consider it. There's a lot. Yeah, we don't even have a final list, but we're, we're going to try to pack it all in into an hour. We don't want to talk forever because we can't because Scrubs is going to come on at six. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll leave it there. All right, everybody, thanks for watching and stick around for David coming up next. Bye bye. And remember, if you follow us, that's usually a rating point. If you sub, that's usually about five rating points. Science. All right, everybody, bye bye. <laughs>